Um, so good morning everybody who is with us today and good morning if you're watching at another time. We're noticing that some people save it for a Monday or save them all up for one weekend further down the line in terms of the videos. So I would like to welcome you in whatever way you're watching us or listening to us maybe in the car or something. We are back again. It's nine o'clock on Sunday, the 17th of December. I know that because it's my brother's birthday tomorrow. And if there's a birthday, I know the day, dates around it. I have a weepy eye situation today. So forgive me for my, my left eye is weeping and my right eye is not in great shape either, as you can see. So I am I'm feeling slightly strange because my eyes aren't working so well this morning. And I don't know. I've just woken up like this. so I don't know exactly what's going on. Um, this morning we are going to be reading this poem that Matthew wrote and the context of it is that in our house we're at the top of the house and we haven't yet managed to furnish our house with any kind of curtains or blinds so every morning we wake up and the sky is right there and because we're at the top we can kind of see above all of the houses and so he feels very taken by the sky and he wrote this poem on Magdi, his daughter's birthday, um, on the 9th of December, when she was 20 years old. And he read it to me and I felt like it brought me back to something. And had this way of unobviously inviting me into a, the inquiry that I feel I'm in some way always in and find it really supportive and helpful to have reminders and more invitations to remember myself and life. So that's what we're going to be doing. Justin and I are both going to read it. Do you want to say anything, Justin? I do. I want to say welcome to everybody. I'm uh, so glad that we're doing this. And one of the things that's happened for me in the last week is that I've had the opportunity to speak with um, quite some number of people who are taking part in this project by watching um, some people who are saving them up and watching them all in one great long go. And then other people who have either not met um, either of us until I, I met some of them this week. Um, and it's such a joy to feel the way that these conversations, which are proving to be so alive for the two of us are touching so many of you. So I wanted to say thank you for that. It really is quite a thing that you um, take the trouble to watch, that you stay with us, that you um, engage. And I, I think mostly that you let yourself be touched or moved or inspired or have some new question raised by the conversation that Lizzie and I are having. So it's, um, it's a great gift to us that that's happening. And um, <clears throat> I'm really excited about reading this poem. Mm. And unlike some other weeks where I've spent many, um, some hours um, thinking about the source and wondering what it's going to bring up um, because of the way my week has gone this week, it's really fresh and new for me. So I have no idea what we're going to get into at all. And that's an interesting and exciting thing to be doing. Okay, so I'm going to begin by reading. Okay. A Beautiful Sky by Matthew Wynn. O oh, beautiful sky, which neither you nor I can but affect a change in its daily grind. Unceasingly, you start the day dependent on our good sun's rays to give us wonder, those of us awake, at first light of the sight unique each and every daybreak. And regardless whether you or I are witness to the morning sky, she with splendor paints her sky with never before See, seen taints of shade and colour all round and high. In the never-to-be-seen-again sky, those of us awake to see it. And even as we sit or lie or stand, awake witnesses to the sky's tableau for our own sake, the sky cares not if we fail to witness her, de her décolletage as her faithful sun rises from within her. A wondrous sky within which neither you nor I can prevent or halt the day's becoming ever different yet stunning regardless of her audience 
an individual performance each separate day, never to be repeated. Each predicted unpredictable start that barely weathermen have the heart to predict, tirelessly you begin to wake the day, and those within can lift their eyes and pray in vain for your beauty to remain this way all day. So powerful yet powerless in any way to do as we bid or pray, dependent on your family of stars and sun to start and end each day, each one. O oh, beautiful sky, composed of many parts, you steal our hearts so regularly and without demand, I thank you on behalf of our kind. Our time is short, and yours bitterly so daily brief and different. But whether we see you, yea or nay, you always there return each day except you never left our sight or blanketed through the night, preparing your ex your, your, for your next debut, your reliably unique and daily morning masterpiece, should we care to view. <clears throat> so I'm going to read it as well. This is O oh Beautiful Sky by Matthew Wynne. <clears throat> o oh Beautiful Sky which neither you nor I can but affect a change in its daily grind. Unceasingly, you start the day, dependent on our good sun's rays to give us wonder. Those of us awake at first light of the sight unique each and every daybreak. And regardless whether you or I are witness to the morning sky, she with splendor paints her sky with ne'er before seen taints of shade and color all around and high in the never to be seen again sky. Those of us awake to see it. And even as we sit or lie or stand awake, witnesses to the sky's tableau for our own sake, the sky cares not if we fail to witness her decolletage as her faithful sun rises from within her. O oh, wondrous sky, within which neither you nor I can prevent or halt the day's becoming. Ever different, yet stunning, regardless of her audience, an individual performance in each separate day, never to be repeated. Each predicted, unpredictable start that barely weathermen have heart to predict, tirelessly you begin to wake the day and those within can lift their eyes and pray in vain for your beauty to remain this way all day. So powerful yet powerless in any way to do as we bid <coughs> or pray. Dependent upon your family of stars and sun to start and end each day, each one. O oh, beautiful sky, composed of many parts, you steal our hearts so regularly and without demand. I thank you on behalf of our kind. Our time is short and yours bitterly so daily brief and different. But whether we see you, yea or nay, you always there return each day, except you never left our sight, all blanketed throughout the night, preparing for your next debut your reliably unique and daily morning masterpiece, should we care to view. Mm. That's so nice to hear you reading it, Justin. <sighs> and as, as I've read it and as you've read it, I feel again this kind of restoration there's a kind of perspective that reminds me that there is so much already here and we fall asleep to it. And it feels like the sky is one of those things that it is ever present and yet we miss it. And it feels like that's the nature of so many aspects of things that are true is that they're enduring and this poem feels like this reminder of the rhythm that is always there in life and which we 
are mostly in deep, deep states of taking for granted. Mm. And the, the way that this moved me was like, oh yeah, I've been forgetting to see that. And it really called me home somehow. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love about this poem, <clears throat> Lizzie, is, oh, is um, one second. I'm just going to have to interrupt myself. I'm going to be back in one tick. One tick. Hold on. Okay. And for those of you um, still here right now, Justin's in his mother-in-law's house. And I get the feeling that maybe she didn't understand what was happening or that there was somebody in her house. So Justin will be making his way back. I was just saying, Justin, that you may have just had to explain to your mother-in-law what was going on. Yes, I'm across. I'm I'm across the road. Um, I wanted to get out of my own house this morning because everybody was asleep, and I decided that having this call here would be uh, less disturbing. But of course, when I um when I came across to here, the house was quiet as well. So I just said hello so that it's clear that I'm in the, not in a the burglar. Dining room. yeah, not a burglar doing this call. Um, I think what was striking me so beautifully about this poem was what you've already said, which is uh, what's already here that we so easily take for granted. But also um, our powerlessness in the face of it. Mm. So the sky remains whatever we do, whether we're here or not, and the sun rises, whether we're here or not, and all of our attempts, Matthew talks about this in various ways as he goes, all of our attempts to have the day be a particular way, mm -hmm. to hold on to it. You know, I was taking this as to have it be sunny when we want it to be sunny or rainy when we want it to be rainy. None of, none of those are of any avail to us. And it, it got me wondering whilst we were reading whether in a way this is one of the ways, one of the reasons in um, why we so we are so ready to allow ourselves to forget the beauty and the scale and the reliability of the world in which we're in the midst of precisely because we can't control it and there's mm -hmm. this sort of um, double trap that I can see that certainly is in my own experience where I imagine first of all that I ought to be able to control the world and all my attempts to control the world and have it just the way I want it so that I won't have to experience being afraid of this or not having that or worrying about this or that they're all based upon an idea that I ought, I ought to have much more influence over the world than I do. Somehow I ought to be super powerful, like a, when I think I'm most deluded about this, like a God or something, because I'm always at the center of my own life and I experience everything. I never experience, well, actually that's not entirely true, but I very rarely experience the world as if I was not in the middle of it with everything arrange, arranged around me. There's a way in which it can be very tempting to not pay attention to the much vaster world that's around. I can keep the story of my own either of my own power or that I meant to have power going. Mm -hmm. And both sides of that story are, are, are really unhelpful. So one, one side where I think I'm super, super duper powerful, of course, is just wrong in so many different ways. And the other one where I feel like I ought to, and so I get afraid that I can't on my own change anything big in the world. And both of those keep the world very small mm -hmm. and have me not want to look and unfailingly, if I put on my boots and put on my coat and walk out of my house and walk up the hill that's not so far from my house where there's a, trees all around and a great big clearing and all you can see is the sky, unfailingly, I'm returned to myself from my own capacity right when I've most lost it. Mm. So you see this... This part that's occurring to me is 
that the the reliability and the beauty of the sky i i love this phrase that i heard once and i don't know whose phrase it is of the importance of putting ourselves in the way of beauty mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but when i do that so many things are different in life including my capacity to accept whatever it is that's happening and sort of in the flip side of this whole thing that i'm saying and my capacity to do something about the things I can do about are all restored simultaneously. Mm. And the sky itself seems to have a magical or at least inspirational properties in that way. Mm. I'm just feeling into this, this thing you're saying, Justin, about being powerful and powerless and... our notions of power in the world you know there's there's what i experience as a kind of brittle power you know of of trying to affect a change that is not necessarily yours to affect will always feel it feels like it's like if you were managing someone and you just kept telling them what to do because you think that they should do what you think they should do versus trusting people's innate goodness to take care of something and learning to trust that they don't need to be controlled all the time by you as if that was possible, but that they might flourish if you let them be and when you were talking about this kind of power and powerlessness I feel like so often when we try and be powerful and it's not real power we end up feeling really powerless and when I when we try and make something the way we think it should be we try and control something the odd thing is that I mean of course there's ways that we might feel powerful because we're in our you know we live alone and we have the kitchen arranged exactly the way we want it or something because nobody else is there but as soon as you get into a relationship this notion of power is a very very interesting topic and it feels to me like you know my life I've had certain feelings of feeling very powerful and when I feel powerful I'm really I don't have my hands on anything I'm not making something happen. I'm more of a a participant, as you were pointing to just there, like I'm not at the center of the power. I'm a participant and there is powerful, there are powerful things arising, powerful feelings happening, powerful moves being made, powerful happenings. And it's a really curious and mysterious world, I think, often the world of power. And what Matthew's pointing to here about our powerlessness in the face of those big things is that, yes, we are powerless in the face of affecting a change in the sky or having the weather be what we want it to be. And that's also a source of our power, which is that we have the power to participate in the way that we consciously intentionally have a wish to or a um a, yeah a conscious way of interacting with that's with something powerful so when it feels to me like a powerful thing to put ourselves in the way of beauty as you say that's a way for us to feel into the power in the world and of us and of others and of nature and that kind of power isn't control it's participation and awareness and being with and feeling into life and it just feels like a really for me anyway like a super kind of the kind of conversation that I think I could have forever and it would never get boring, you know, about what is power and what is powerlessness. 
because I certainly feel powerless lots of the time too. And it's really confounding to feel so powerless in the face of something so big. And what I like about what you're saying, Justin, is I'm getting curious about whether nature is one of the antidotes to the wrangle, mm. where, where our nervous systems can relax and participate rather than feel like we are in the grapple all the time with our lives, thinking they should be turning out the way that we think, or we should get what we want to get, or people should be the way we want them to be. And maybe nature is a wonderful way of feeling our place in things. And the sky, in this case, is having that effect on me where I can feel my size somehow, my relativity to things, that I'm not the centre of the universe, that there's these big, big things that make me who I am and enable me to breathe and see myself reflected in them. And it's a really different currency than trying to make the world what I think it should be. As you're saying all of this, Lizzie, one of the distinctions that's occurring to me is <clears throat> the difference between them um, power over, mm. like, like when we try to have power over other people, for example, <clears throat> or power over the world, the natural resources of the world, and what I might call power to, mm. or power for the sake of. Mm. So as you were talking, two very really current examples were coming to my mind. So one is from the work that you and I have done in organizations, which is coming across again and again, all the ways in which we try to organize ourselves. You know, an organization is really a group of people who got together for the sake of something and how often we construct those so that some of us have power over and we think that that's the way that that things will happen we'll have power over people and we can make them do this and this and that and we can keep them in line and we can um keep ourselves afraid and them afraid mm. and we'll build all kinds of systems and um protocols and procedures that look all very sensible and rational but are really based upon that idea which is that i will exert power over you i'll uh, monitor you i'll constantly i'll appraise you I'll, all of these things that we do that um in one way work out but because they're all exercising power over what they do is they leave us much shallower and they leave other people much shallower than they otherwise would be and they they fail to trust that human beings when we get dedicated to something that matters whether because it helps us take care of ourselves and our families or because it's for the sake of something bigger that when we get dedicated to something that matters, we can actually do extraordinary things together. And yes, we have to wrangle with all of the disagreements and the misunderstandings and the times I thought you ought to be doing it this way and I, you did thought you were going to do it that way, all of those kind of things. We can't free ourselves from all of that complexity. But we so can organise ourselves if we choose in a way that will have our power be the power that comes from acting together in shared commitment with other people. And we do the same with the natural world. So I, I so agree with you that the natural world, when we are prepared to relinquish our power over it, can, mm. re can return us in the way that you're talking about. But as long as we see it, as we often teach ourselves and are taught to do, to see it as a resource, you know, something I can master and subdue and extract from it can't touch me in that way and really a lot of the difficulty that we're in at the moment is because we're too afraid to give up having power over yeah and it is frightening to give up having power over anybody you know i see this so in, in my relationships with the people I love the most. It's so easy when I'm afraid mm. to take up a power over position and tr try and force somebody or to, to um, say what I want them to say or to feel what I want them to say, feel or do what I want them to do because I'm afraid. And it's a really big, brave, vulnerable step to let go of that and to, 
to be in relationship together and to be in the question of mm. how do we take care together of what it is that we want to take care of so I don't have to diminish you mm. and diminish myself in the process. Mm. And then, of course, because I've diminished both of us, then feel I have to exert even more control because I can feel how impoverished this whole situation is. And if I get more controlling, it will get better. Mm. And Matthew's poem reminds me that there's another, and, and what you're saying reminds me that there's another whole stand to take. And it requires a much deeper degree of trust mm -hmm. than power over can ever accommodate. Yeah. Mm. And this kind of cultivation of this, this trust, and I would also call it faith as well, that we can participate in our genuineness and life, life's, life itself is trustworthy, that we can participate genuinely and faithfully and life's doing a good enough job always of regulating itself you know when 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 we worried about somebody's path for example you know we have this in our family with Matthew's daughter where we get really frightened for her or something and we all try and have our input and I'm a stepmom, so I'm kind of got this other vantage point where I'm not so frightened for her. So I can see it really clearly in myself, of course, but also in her parents. And all the, all the ways we take our hands off when we trust her, things turn out way better than when we try and meddle with her. And recognizing that things take the time that they take, for example, is a really powerful move to make in ourselves rather than feeling like we have to make them happen sooner or now. I, I'm really impatient myself. So I feel like things have to happen really quickly. And I notice how that's a control move. That's a, I feel very powerless in my impatience. And there's a, there's a dropping down that happens when I remember that has a far greater, deeper perspective on things where things take the time that they take and I'm not going to save anyone from anything. That life will do any saving there is to be done if saving is what's to be done. And I'm, of course, you know, if I'm with small children and they could bang their head and then I have them not bang their head, that's a different thing. But when we're in the world of adult relationships, for example, and everyone has their own path and their own way through life, this topic of power is like, you know, how do I be with people powerfully and not be in the diminished position, as you say, Justin, of trying to control what happens and what people do and how people act and how people behave. But how do I build relationship that's respectful and meaningful so that we can do things together for the sake of our shared purpose? It's a really different question about being a human in the world and being mm. in a relationship. As you would. <clears throat> talking about this Lizzie I was thinking a lot about relationship and it, it struck me immediately from what you were saying that the very act of making relationship with other people is what makes it possible to make up this move of trusting mm -hmm. and how I'm not sure why the world of organization seems so present for me this morning but it's very present for me this morning and I, I'm reflecting on how often in that world, which is such a huge part of the life of human beings on this planet, mm. the move is we don't have time to make relationship. We don't have time to make relationship where we learn to trust one another and inspire one another and cultivate the kind of power that you're talking about, where we um, are the nature of our presence and conversation with one another inspires us to commit to things that are important and to shared responsibility. We say, 
we don't have time for that because there are things to do. And because there are things to do and we don't have time to make relationship, now I have to control you. Because mm. if I don't control you, you won't do the thing that needs doing. Mm. Unless I either, you know, have a sanction because you didn't do it right or mm. some process that will make you feel ashamed or, or feel at odds with yourself or a bonus to pay you because you behave like a good child or whatever it is. We make all of those moves. Mm. And I'm saying this based upon my own experience and long experience of, of you know, various kinds of work in organizations where we so often say, well, yeah, relationship. That would be cool if we had time. But to be honest, we're much too afraid about what will happen if we do that. Mm. So we're building a world which is upside down from the one that you're talking about. Mm. And uh, we wonder why it's so hard and we wonder why people show up and we show up with so little of ourselves and our deep human capacity present. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why there's so little wisdom apparently in our organizations and so many of them and just um, grab, 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 grab mm -hmm. for ourselves. So if we were, if we were really willing to, to grow up in the way that would have us risk and would have us understand that to be in, to be human beings is to be in relationship. That is the primary mm. definition of being human is that we're always in relationship, but we, we pretend we're not. And I suppose if we were willing to walk out and feel this by doing what Matthew says and of this idea that he's pointing to that the sky is always present even when the even when it's obscured by clouds or it's nighttime it's always there and that is a both true and a very profound metaphor for the way in which we forget we keep on forgetting this vast background that we're in that we can um, stand on and that can support us so that we don't have to manipulate other people and we don't have to manipulate ourselves mm -hmm. And that background, Justin, is also who you are and who I am and who everybody else is. That the sky could also be the metaphor for the truth of our identity. And that our personalities, our egos, our fights, our despair, our everything that's happening in, in terms of what fills up a sky and maybe obscures a sky, obscures the blue, feels like who we are. And there's so much more than that that is present that if we have practices to remember ourselves, we might remember something different about ourselves than our usual habitual personality patterns of, I, you know, remember myself as someone who is inadequate or filled with self-doubt or criticizing all the time and feeling bad about myself because I can't find the goodness in the world or, you know, whatever our stuff is, there is also, there's a big and in all of it, which is a hundred percent worth remembering, which is that it's the ground that we stand on is basically who we are in all reality and who everyone else is. And that basic goodness, that basic life that is each of us is, is benevolent. And we can remember that at any time about ourselves and anybody that we're with, that this vastness belongs next to every distortion, behind every distortion. That's why, um, as you say, why having self-remembering practices are so important and they have been they've largely vanished from our, our wider culture mm. we don't know how to stop and how to feel in to our part in something much bigger than ourselves yeah we don't know how to remember that we're not just these separate atoms bouncing around and getting in each other's way but we're expressions of something the very something that brought all of us forth is what we're an expression of. Mm. And we, we um, because we've lost so many, and it's very often ancient practices that remind us of this, we've lost these, we've turned away from them in our attempt to be rational and mm. productive that we forget all of this. And that's why Matthew's poem and, and anyone who's writing in this way is such a gift because it, it itself is a 
self-remembering mm. for those of us who get to read it to ourselves mm. and to one another is oh mm. i'm not on my own mm. yeah and i think it comes from the self-remembering as well and i think you know anything that we that, that comes through us that we that we make that comes from that place is an invitation to the world if we chose to share it as well and i'm really glad that he well i'm glad that matthew writes poems because it, in that i write poems and that you write poems and that anybody writes poems because poems have that kind of quality don't they of something slightly something from awareness poems feel like they're from a the, the kind of poems i read and love are the ones that come from awareness of what it is to be a person all these different aspects of what it is to be a human being. Mm. So we've um, <clears throat> we've spoken for about the amount of time that we promise people we will speak. Yeah. So uh, I feel like I could go in, on in this conversation for hours mm -hmm. with you, Lizzie, and um, I'm sure we will. Yeah. I think we should end. I want to say thank you to you that we uh, do this and mm. I want to say thank you again for everyone who's hung out with us for any part of this conversation and if you're still here right at the end for staying with us to the end and I suppose my wish this morning is that whatever we're doing touches you in some way but then maybe whatever benefit you get from it from uh, being with us then gets passed on to others so that uh, even if you don't tell anybody anything about what this conversation has been, your presence in the world can be of benefit to others. And then, of course, they can be of benefit to others. And so it goes on. Yeah. And we are planning on being here next Sunday, mm -hmm. which will be uh, <clears throat> Christmas Eve morning. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we'll see you all then. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being with us.